Hi, and welcome back to Once Upon a Tiny Farm. My name's Drew. In this video today, we're gonna get planted our final uh, bed in our 400 square foot garden. And the first one that I'm gonna plant is the bed of sweet potatoes. And um, these sweet potatoes I got a few days ago. I ordered these from Johnny Seeds. Um, this variety is called the Mehan Yam. I believe it takes a, like something like 100 or 110 days. So this actually uh, comes to maturity a little bit sooner than a lot of other uh, sweet potato varieties, which is one reason that I like this. This is a certified organic uh, seed potato too, so I'm getting it from a good source. I know Johnny Seeds, I get a lot of my, almost all of my market garden seeds and supplies from them. Um, so I think ordering sweet potato slips is maybe the best way to go if you are a new gardener and if you're watching these videos, you're probably a new gardener. Um, a couple of years ago, I was a new gardener too and I'm no expert, I'm still learning, but I'm um, just sharing some of my knowledge that I have. So I took some video when two or three days ago these came in uh, from Johnny's and I put them in water, I put them in a glass of water and in just two or three days, they didn't have these roots on them when I got them in the mail. They looked pretty healthy, but they didn't have all these white roots. This is just from two or three days in this pot. So these are ready to go in the ground. Um, I've done videos in the past on how to make your own sweet potato slips, um, but I think this is an easier way to go for a first timer to just order the sweet potato slips one time and then in future years you could save the potatoes that you harvest from this harvest and grow your own slips from them and you only need maybe two sweet potatoes three sweet potatoes you'll get so many slips um, from them I'll put a link to that previous video where I uh, made my own sweet potato slips I show you two ways to, that you could do it pretty easy but what I'm gonna do here is plant these in this raised bed and um, what I did on this raised bed is I really uh, layered up the soil, the compost here. I put a couple extra layers. You could tell it's even above um, the five and a half inch um, wood here. But that's what I want. I want kind of a big mound because we're growing in the ground and sweet potatoes really like to grow down deep. And we didn't make these super deep, these raised beds. It would be, would be beneficial if we made them a little bit taller and a little bit deeper, but we're gonna work with what we got here. So what my plan is, is I have 50 of these. Um, I didn't do the math on how much, how far these will go here. But what I'm gonna do is space them 12 inches apart. So I'm gonna have six or seven rows down and they're gonna be 12 inches apart in the row as well. So probably should have got my, got a ruler out, but of course I didn't do that. Unlike, unlike the regular potato, you can't just plant the sweet potato to get um, sweet potatoes. You need to first get the slips growing off the sweet potato, and this is called a sweet potato slip. This will get you more sweet potatoes, but if you had just planted the sweet potato itself, that wouldn't work out the way that you would think it would like a potato would grow. So it's another reason why you need to grow slips, but they're very, very easy to grow yourself. Um, and like I said, I did a video on that, um, I think last year sometime. Very easy to do and kind of fun to do too. All right, so I got this all planted. Um, I think I ended up planting 46 slips. Um, 
This is not as nice as I wanted to plan it, but I'm kind of in a rush because I got a market tomorrow, but I really wanted to get these sweet potato slips in the ground. So I have three left. I'm going to have to throw random places around our property. But I basically have four rows, and then I planted some um, in spaces in between the two rows, kind of in the middle, like on a diagonal. So hopefully these have enough space to grow. I think I did way too intensive spacing, but you know what? We'll find out if I made a huge mistake doing this um, in a couple months from now when we harvest, and we'll know from the size of these whether I should have planted them a little bit more uh, further apart. But anyway, they're in the ground. We're gonna get some sweet potatoes. I just don't know how big they'll be, but they're in the ground and I'm happy with that. And now we'll move on to the other two raised beds. One more thing I wanted to show is that um, I made some changes to my raised beds um, here, these last two raised beds. Um, one thing I noticed was that the first two raised beds I put together, the wood was really straight and looked really good. Um, but these last two raised beds, I wait, waited too long to put together. And this wood, this, these cedar fence boards are very thin and some of them warped a little bit so they weren't straight like they were supposed to be. And I needed, I realized I needed some cross bracing to keep the width of the raised beds that I wanted at 36 inches wide. And I found that I actually really like the way that this looks because this is basically dividing up each raised bed um, the way that my succession plan was intended to do anyway. So you see one, two, three raised beds um, individually in sections and I like that. Um, I found what worked the best was two by sixes for the cross bracing. And the two by sixes aren't actually two by six, uh, which works out great. It's like one and a half by five and a half inches and five and a half inches ex exactly the depth of these um, cedar fence boards. So it works out perfect and I like the thickness of it. It gives a good rigidity to it. Um, so I think I'm going to do this to the first two raised beds as well so it all looks uniform and nice. and. Even though it's one long raised bed, we're dividing it up into sections and we'll be able to do our square foot gardening uh, really nicely um, this way. And uh, I like it. All right, so right now I'm gonna plant this front bed here with corn. And this uh, corn I actually tried in a tray for the first time. I usually just direct sow them in the soil but I decided to try them as transplants in a tray and these are getting very tall. They need to go in the ground. I actually planted this whole tray in my greenhouse full and what ended up happening was birds got in there and ate the corn out of these cells, which is really annoying. But I think I have 20 or 21 uh, corn stalks, which is what exactly what I'm planning to plant in this bed. So what I'm gonna do is plant them 12 inches apart one, two, three in a row across, and then 12 inches, another three, and I'm gonna do that down. And there should be spots for 21 um, ear stalks of corn. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take these plugs out and put them in. So this tray um, is called a wind strip tray. And um, what makes this a little bit different than a normal cell tray is that it has air gaps in the bottom and strips on the side of each cell. So that allows, as the plant grow, grows, to um, it gives it an air pruning effect, which basically, if you ever saw a regular cell tray, there's nowhere for the roots to go, so they kind of spiralize in there and can get root bound. But with a tray like this, when the roots grow and they hit um, air, like they hit the oxygen, that root will stop growing and it'll grow a different root. So it grows actually a healthier root structure for the plant. And ever since I bought these trays, they're basically all that I use now. And it's basically like using a soil block uh, maker, but in a cell tray form so it's a bit easier than doing lots of soil blocks. I just use my pinky finger to push these out and then I can pull them out. Alright. Hey. 
that's a good example of what I was talking about. Look at those roots. That is a very healthy root ball there, ready to grow and expand in the ground. That's awesome. I've never grown corn like this in a raised bed. Definitely not in transplants like I just mentioned. So I'm excited to see how this goes and I'm hoping uh, for the best that things really work out well here with the corn. I'm actually really liking how this is turning out with the transplants, the corn. Now this is something if you are on a larger scale and had acres and acres of corn, obviously you wouldn't want to be transplanting the corn. That would take way too long. But for a small scale like this, I think it makes a lot of sense. And it kind of guarantees, for one, that you have a good healthy start and that it's off to a good start. Look at the roots on that. That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Definitely recommend the, uh, these windstrip trays. I got these from Neversink Farm, um, but now Bootstrap Farmer also makes windstrip trays that are basically the same thing. So you can get them wherever you can get them. I think they're worth the investment. One more row. This actually worked out perfectly with the 21 that grew. Things just tend to happen for a reason sometimes. Although I was, I actually transplanted that whole tray. It's 128 cells with the intention of filling in some gaps um, in my other corn patch that was a bit larger than this one. Um, but I'm not gonna be able to do that because the birds got into my greenhouse and ate the corn. So, I hope you enjoyed it, birds. Now this whole bed is planted, it looks really good. Perfect. I've got 21 um, corn stalks in here. But what I didn't mention that I plan to do for this bed, and I didn't put it in my plan, it's something that I decided to do um, after I already made my plans for this, is that I wanna try something called the Three Sisters um, Planting Companion, which is something that the Native Americans did years and years ago. They would plant corn with beans and squash. So they all complement each other. Um, the squash acts as a ground cover and prevents weeds from growing. And the beans add nitrogen to the soil, which is needed by the corn, which is very, it's dependent on nitrogen. So they all kind of work together to help each other out. And also the uh, um, squash can grow up the corn stalks. So you have to plan this right, which is another reason why I wanted to transplant. So I already had a um, ear of corn um, started. So what I'm gonna do now is actually plant um, a little row of corn here in between, uh, just two rows of corn in between. And then I might do um, maybe two or three squash plants on the, on the ends here. And um, I'm not gonna plant the squash though until I see the beans germinate. Once I see, I'm gonna plant beans right now and in a few days when I see them start to germinate, I'm going to I'm going to direct sow some squash seeds on the edges here. So I'm going to I'm curious if this will become a big mess or if it'll be a big success. I don't know. We'll find out together, but kind of excited to try this experiment, see what happens. So right now I'm going to plant uh, two rows of corn right in between. I mean, two rows of beans in between the corn rows here. And uh, let's do that right now. All right, here we go with some nitrogen-fixing beans. I'm really bad at doing this with my hands. I mentioned I have a cedar that I usually use. Well, 
It's not really gonna work in a raised bed like this, but that will be good. Grab another handful, do another row, and then cover them up pretty good. This kind of, uh, well, I have a couple colors mixed in here, but the majority of it is a variety called Velour. It's a, sm it's a skinny uh, purple colored uh, green bean. Turns green when it's cooked, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's purple. Kind of cool, different. I like to throw in different colors there when I'm planting. Just green, green beans gets kind of boring after a while. That's fun to bring new colors to market, but there we go. I've got two rows of purple green beans. I think they're mixed in with some yellow wax beans as well. I'm actually just gonna use my hand and cover them up. It's all right to get your hands dirty. Already in the soil. All right. This is exciting. I've never done this before, but this would be not just a really good use, it's a really good use of the space. And if it works, as I assume it will, because why else would the Native Americans have done this for for so many years? If it didn't, it's a really good use of a small space as well, because you get to grow a lot of things in a very small space. So look at that, 21 stalks of corn. How about that? That worked out perfect with what actually germinated from <laughs> that tray two rows of green beans and we'll add some squash seeds maybe two or three along the edges here to grow and uh, grow up the store the stalks of corn as they grow and uh, yeah this is gonna be a pretty exciting raised bed I'm looking forward to this one seeing what happens all right it's been a few days and since I planted the beans and now I'm planting some Delicata squash seeds. Um, I'm gonna put two um, on each side here. And my intention is to have, I'm gonna train the, hopefully to have the vines grow this way so they don't grow this way onto my other raised beds. Um, I don't want that to happen. So I planted two seeds, one in the middle, one on the end. I'm gonna hopefully have those grow this way and have these two grow this way. And um, that will complete our three sisters um, garden here with the beans, squash, and corn. And I am excited to see this stuff hopefully grow very well. But even if it's a failure, don't worry, I will share, share this failure with all of you guys. So we have some lettuce in the middle that I, I only got half of that done and the um, sweet potatoes are growing very well back there we got a couple days of rain and things are doing really well all right that's going to wrap up this video uh the latest update on our 400 square foot garden we've actually got basically the entire garden planted all of the first successions and very soon uh, we're going to start with um, taking out some of our first uh, plantings and putting in something else right away to keep this garden growing strong all season long so stick around thanks for watching this video found it helpful give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're new here i'd really appreciate that as well all right thanks for watching we'll see you next time